I'm just down at the river tonight, guys, with the uh, new Tamron 150 500. And <laughs> again, I'm questioning, you know, is 500 millimeters enough? Uh, yeah, it is. You know, I'm just being picky. I'm used to my 150 to 600, um, but I don't carry that lens. So that has to be a compromise. You know, you lose that 100 millimeters, but now I actually take this out of the house and bring it with me. So, you know, you either get the shots because you have the 150 500 or you don't get the shots because you left your camera at home because it was just too big and bulky. So that's what I'm struggling with a little bit right now. I, I would ideally like more reach because I'm even using the A6600 and I'm finding that the reach isn't out as far as I'd like. Now I mentioned, uh, I did a video where you can use the digital uh, TCs that are built into the Sony bodies. They do work great in some circumstances, but in others, um, you don't get touch focus or tracking focus. You lose all of your focus options. Basically the screen just gets a green box around it and it will focus wherever it thinks it needs to focus. So if you're gonna use those digital TCs, there is that drawback. But where this lens is really um, shining for me tonight is its macro capabilities. This thing focuses under two feet. I think it's two feet, right around two feet. Uh, it, it, it's crazy. You know, at the 150 millimeter end, at the reproduction, the magnification is 1.3 times. I'll, I'll, I'll take some shots, I'll show you guys. And for me, you guys know I love my macro. That's making up for me whining about having a little bit longer reach on the longer end because the other lens, uh, it only focuses at around seven feet. The 150-600 G2, it's just under seven feet. So it's a different lens, it's a different beast and I just have to get used to it, but I am loving the results from this lens. Just out shooting birds in the yard again with the 150-500 today on the A6600. Loving the results, guys. If you can get within 20 feet of a bird or a squirrel or whatever, you're going to resolve fantastic detail with this. I want to show you guys an image of a flicker that I took. The flicker was like 200 feet up there in a tree. I couldn't get any closer to it. Um, I didn't use the built-in digital zoom. We just took you know straight 500 millimeters on the lens. And I was still impressed with the sharpness and the detail uh, of that bird, even though it was way out there. So after, you know, using this for the last week and a half, I'm finding pretty much it is the same as the 150-600 G2. It's just the E-mount version, right? 100 millimeters shorter and uh, focus is faster. The tracking is better. So you're getting all the, the modern conveniences of E-mount. The one thing that I, I did find that I don't like personally is that the manual focus ring right here, it does not allow direct manual focus override. And what that means is when you're in autofocus mode, if you turn that ring, nothing happens. On the 150 to 600, you could set your focus even in autofocus mode. And then you, I have a button on the back that I push for manual or autofocus mode. So you spin the ring, get what you want in focus, push that button and it basically locks your focus. I can't do that. I have to do the opposite, basically. I push that button first, then you're in manual focus mode, then you can use the ring. So. Is it a big deal breaker? No, absolutely not. It's just uh, it's just reversing my process.
partridge is just up here and there's a rabbit hiding right over here starting to turn brown I can hear my grouse drumming just on the edge of hearing, so he's probably a hundred yards over in here somewhere. Let's see if we can find him. There's another one just in front of me here, but if I could impart to you guys how thick this is, I don't think I'm going to get close enough without scaring him. just too crazy thick. He's maybe 30 feet up there somewhere drumming. Well, no luck on the grouse front, but I tried. We'll make that a priority this week. I want to get some beautiful photos, especially with the male all roughed out with the black neck feathers. I've never gotten good photos of that, so it's on my list. Stay tuned. One report I saw online, the guy was complaining about the lens hood. Mine has not come off in a week and a half. Uh, if you turn it, it will click into place. I'm uh, just assuming he either had a defective unit or he didn't click it, turn it until it clicked all the way into place because mine hasn't moved in a week. It's on there. First of the song sparrows are back. I gotta be honest, I don't know what these are. <laughs> They got a little yellow stripe down the, the middle of their head. And I've just got a couple of shots here. Uh, very fast. I mean, you get one shot and they're gone. They're on to the next branch. Um, this thing's working awesome. I've got a couple shots I can show you guys. I'll find out what they are and I'll put the name on the photos. They were taken uh, at about 20 feet from the camera. So zoomed in uh, 500 millimeters all the way, I believe. Check these out. So I'm just grabbing some shots of the kids as they play bocce ball. And I got to tell you, man, the, the tracking on the Tamron 15500 is amazing. The So they're running around and the eye tracking is just, it's bang on. I don't own a lens that is tracking as good as this thing is tracking. <laughs> 